is Will Prowl. So in this video, we're gonna learn how to take something that connects to your cigarette lighter, and we're gonna be able to wire it directly to your solar system. So if you have a fuse box, I'm gonna go over the procedure on how to take this apart and how to know which one's negative and which one's positive and how to actually connect the terminals and put it on your fuse block. And if you don't have a fuse block, we're also gonna learn how to put it with an inline fuse so you can connect it to any solar system. So first of all, most of these you can take apart there's usually a screw most of the cheaper ones have a screw if not you're gonna have to rip it apart somehow loosen the screw it just fell out and then on top you're gonna unscrew it usually when you unscrew it there's going to be a fuse underneath it usually it's gonna be 5 to 10 amps rating depending on the gauge of wire that's connected to it take this out and usually there's a ring on top yeah, this one's got it. And that holds the two pieces of plastic together. And then we're gonna just break it apart and watch this. So inside of the actual, you know, cigarette lighter adapter, you're gonna see all these little wires everywhere. And what you need to basically understand that's most important is which one's negative and which one's positive. So the outside, these little parts right here, these are negative. Okay, this is the ground. And then the middle piece, this little piece with the spring, which goes right down the center, this is your positive. So when you take this apart, you need to remember which one's on the outside. This one's negative because it's on the outside. This one's fake. This one's just here as a spring. So this is our negative and this is our positive. And you need to remember that when you take it apart. You can't just take it apart and then see two wires and think, oh, uh oh, which one is it? So for this one, we've got a little knot. So we have to undo this knot real quick. All right, so now you have two wires. You have the negative and the positive. You wanna cut it a little bit so you have some slack to work with. So the positive, let's take that one off. And you're just gonna take any kind of cutters, cut it off, and then take a wire stripper, and you need to strip just enough so, it can, so a connector can fit in there. This is a very tiny gauge wire, so we're gonna use a very tiny gauge connector. Um, I have a little kit right here, so we have quite a lot. This will probably work perfectly for a very tiny red one. Red is like the standardized size for a very small one. And yeah, that fits perfectly. This looks like a 16 gauge wire, so it's pretty, pretty tiny. And so let's, let's do the positive terminal first, okay? And know which one positive is by crimping it first. And so for this one, it has insulation. So what we wanna do is, you know, put, put it inside the insulation indentation like this, and then crimp it. Make sure you crimp all the way. Uh, make sure the wire is clean. Make sure you use a crimper and not pliers for, you know, the general procedure for making a proper termination. And so what we've got now, is so we've got this super strong, and you should feel it, pull on it. Now we're gonna do the negative side. So we've got two wires, but when I put a connector on this side, it's gonna look the same as the other side, and you need to know which one is positive and which one's negative. So in this case, I'm gonna take the negative, and this is just something I've been doing for years. I just put a knot in the wire. You can use this temporarily, and then you can connect the positive first, and then unknot this, because you don't want knots in wires. And then, so, now that we have the knot, we can add the connector, because we know that this side is negative. Also, instead of using a knot, you can simply use electrical tape. Also, sometimes the wires will actually have little striations on the sides. Um, this one actually has it. So on the positive one, there's a bunch of little ribs on it, and the other one doesn't have it. This one's shiny and flat. So look at both wires and try to find if there's any differences, because you can use that and not have to label anything at all. So now we're going to actually strip the wire and add a connector. So now we have two connectors. We have the negative and we've got the positive. If you have a little fuse block, you can simply connect these directly onto it. Make sure that you pick a connector that has a hole that fits for your fuse block because it's horrible when you get the wrong size connector or you get the right gauge of wire size but the wrong size hole for your fuse block terminal. And then you hook it up and you're like, God damn it, this is horrible. Also, when you put it to a fuse block, make sure that the gauge of wire that you're using works with the fuse that you're using. This is very tiny wire thickness wise gauge. So you're gonna use like a five amp 
fuse on it because this can only handle so much. Now let's say that you don't have a fuse block and you just want to wire this directly to your solar system to a, main, a power main or something like that. Um, you're going to have to add your own fuse. So we're going to just snip off this little connector and we're going to strip the wire again and then we're going to have an inline fuse. And so we want to connect this to the positive terminal wire and then you're going to use a crimp connector and connect these two together. So now you have the positive terminal that has a fuse, and you have a negative terminal. For this fuse, look at this, this is a 30 amp, all right? This should not be used with this gauge of wire. Also, this crimp connector just shouldn't be working with this small gauge of wire. I'm using this as a demonstration, and I'm gonna throw this fuse out anyways. But if, if I was running this, I would have used an inline fuse that has a similar gauge wire to whatever I'm connecting it with. And then I'd also get a smaller fuse. This is like 16 gauge wire. So this fuse would be around five or seven amps depending on which appliance I'm running. But this is how you hook it up. You have the negative, you have the positive. Also, if you do not like cigarette lighter adapters such as myself because they're horrible, they pop out, they're inefficient, they can heat up around the sides, I don't like cigarette lighter adapters. They're not rated for high amperage applications. What I use instead are XT60 connectors. So you can buy solder on ones, and you can buy crimp on ones that have the wires. So the wires, you just strip these and you crimp it directly to the wires of the appliance. If not though, if you can solder, you can solder it directly to this. This makes it so that you can plug your appliances in when they're needed and then turn them off by unplugging them. This makes it really nice because you can have all of your appliances hooked up to these and then you can have a bunch of female connectors throughout the RV or van or whatever vehicle that you have and then you simply plug in XT60 connector appliances at any time that you want. So for example, this air compressor used to have a cigarette lighter adapter on the end it had a horrible small thin gauge wire and it got really hot and it was really bad and it made this run like crap so what I did is I shortened the wires I put really thick gauge wires because this is a high amperage device and then I put an XT60 connector so whenever I hook this up and I actually have these throughout the RV right now so this little extension cable I have an XT60 connector right now it's hooked up to a USB adapter so I have cell phone chargers and this is on my couch so I can use my cell phones whenever. But if I want to hook up an air compressor at any time, I can hook it up with this. And then having XT60 connectors, I mean I've talked about them a lot in the other videos. They're very cheap, it's like a couple dollars and you can hook up anything. They're good to 60 amps. I've seen guys push like 100 amps with a 60 amp connector, they do get hot but you can do it. I'm actually charging my unicycle right now with XT60 connectors. It's 60 volts, so I don't have to worry that much about the amperage, but they, they are so awesome to use. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. If you have cigarette lighter appliances, you should just you know hardwire them or use XT60 connectors. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below, and I hope you found this useful. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.